Good morning, Emily. Have a good weekend? <laughs> yeah. No. Yes. <laughs> oh, I've been there. No, it wasn't. Ugh. I don't want to get into it. No problem. It, it just feels weird for me to talk about my personal life here. You know, I don't really know you guys all that well yet. I totally get that. I think I totally screwed up this date. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What happened? You have to understand, I'm a nerd. Like, seriously. And I can fool people for days, weeks even. But sooner or later, I blow my cover and I say something so geeky and then he doesn't respond and I lose all confidence. What did you say? Kilgore Trout. Guy has a problem with Kurt Vonnegut? You know Kilgore Trout? I read Slaughterhouse Five when I was 12 and it blew my mind. Seriously, I couldn't get enough, so I just kept going and I read them all. Yeah, yeah, me too. What's your favorite? Oh, Mother Night. The one about the American spy. Pretends to be a Nazi. You are who you pretend to be. So be careful who you pretend to be. Oh my God, I can't believe you're a Vonnegut fan. <laughs> you just made my day. Anytime. <laughs> Conference room in five minutes, please. Got it. Sandra Davis, 16 years old. This is her singing at her high school talent show a month ago. This is her on-again, off-again boyfriend, Ken Newcomb. Their bodies were found in a park near the male victim's car in Groton, an affluent, mostly white suburb of New York City in Westchester County. It's the third of three killings believed to be a series of hate crimes. Hate crimes? First two victims were Keisha Andrews, 15, and Vicki Williams, 17. They disappeared from their homes in central Westchester one night. Their bodies were found in a wooded area in the southern part of the county near the city. Hey, this is weird. Uh, there are traces of GHB found in the first two victims, but no sign of sexual assault. So why would the unsub use a, a date rape drug to commit a hate crime? <laughs> Maybe he wants to weaken them so they can't fight back. But there was no GHB in the victims of the double homicide. There's a lot that's different about the double homicide. And the question's why. All right, we just got new information. A few weeks before the murder of Sandra Davis and Ken Newcomb, a threatening letter was delivered to Sandra Davis's door. She showed it to her parents, who then notified the police. The police never figured out who wrote it. We see Ken with you, and it makes us sick. Take care to stop this now, or you will pay. If you tell anyone about this, you will pay. Strange, it doesn't seem real. What do you mean? Well, first of all, the use of we in a threat this direct is almost always bogus. One individual trying to defuse responsibility. Also, the message itself seems contradictory. On the one hand, take care to stop this now or you will pay. Presumably, they want them to stop seeing each other, but then on the other hand, they don't want them to go public with it. If you tell anyone about this, you will pay. The point of hate crimes is to increase publicity, not decrease it. It's like terrorism. An effective threat lets everybody know that they're in danger if they do this behavior. The author would want Sandra to tell people about the note. Doesn't sound like a guy who's actually prepared to kill. Actually, it doesn't sound like a guy at all. Uh, take care to stop this implies empathy. Take care? Males don't use this type of language, especially when they're trying to threaten somebody. This message is certainly written by a female, and based on the lack of psychological sophistication, I'd say it's most likely an adolescent. You think a girl killed these kids? I think a girl wrote this note. Let's call that mystery number one. You got a number two? Maybe. It says here the autopsy on Sandra Davis was inconclusive. And she suffered blunt force trauma to the face. She had some bruising around her neck. Cause of death is still unclear. The coroner's working on it. A lot of questions. Let's get started on some answers. Mm -hmm.